Good morning, folks. We've got a blank disc here in terms of sunspots. Things look different in different angstroms, and we'll see that weather, earthquakes, and science news. If you didn't catch our second video upload here yesterday, it is a two-minute must-watch. Check out our channel uploads. But right now, we're going to spaceweathernews.com to find the last day on our star with little other than the northern coronal hole swinging through. It is clearly trans-equatorial now that we can see the full extension. Setting the seismic watch, we'll come back to that. Because it's also set to have its solar wind arrive here at Earth as we enter the weekend. The solar wind does show a minor coronal hole stream in impact yesterday and overnight from the coronal hole that was just out ahead of it. Orange density with a little jolt first, then below the plasma speed and temperature in purple and green rise together. That is a perfect coronal hole signature, but its telemetry was minor, as I said, and geomagnetic disruptions from it have been on the lower end of the scale. Let's come back to the geoelectric map of the U.S. Yesterday we saw tiny little flashes of induced current, and today, Looking back at last night's readings from the stream impact, you can see it was wholly minor. These blips are only reaching slightly lighter blue hues, but still considered tiny events geoelectrically. Let's go to Indonesia, where a toxic haze has engulfed the region. There are more lung health issues and confirmed pollution-related deaths here than anywhere else in the world even China. And having man-made forest fire smoke invade in a surrounding attack is more than these people deserve to deal with. Quick look at Wisconsin as a tornado dropped there yesterday, flipping semis and creating a sea of debris around the hardest hit region. Tonight there will be a chance for more north of the border as the sunset blow up of storms will approach the Hudson Bay. Eyes open there. Also want to give a nod to continued rainfall across the subcontinent of India. Monsoon trying to make up for a pitiful season, but the locals probably wish it would take its time. Otherwise, they get floods. Earthquakes up next. Magnitude 6 hits continued, but the biggest rumble of importance was shallow in Pakistan. Hundreds hurt. Hundreds of homes destroyed. Nearly every building nearby is severely damaged. Nowhere on Earth do we transfer shallow seismic energy up into surface structures like they do in the Middle East. One of my favorite kinds of articles is up next, the kind where they find something and don't have any clue what it is or why they found it. Turns out the way mountains grow and their peak height potential over time is not so well understood. River action, deep push, and steepness of the mountain all play subtle but important roles that they didn't appreciate before. Up next, a little FYI, while they are starting to use radioscopes across the world in collaboration, the largest single radioscope on the planet now sits in China. Fast, opening operation phase and has been wholly opened up to the world scientists for use. Again, its name is Fast, it's in China, and it's a big one. Folks, the European Space Agency has a message. Energy from the sun drives weather and climate. How much of that energy is absorbed versus how much is reflected into space is a huge factor in the global energy budget and global temperatures. Today's satellites get a pitiful view of the infrared spectrum between 4 and 15 microns, but imagine if they could extend it to 100. That's exactly what's going to happen. In what they call one of the missing pieces of climate science, they're taking a new electromagnetic look at the atmosphere. The bad news? It's not going to launch until 2026. Oof. Combining two articles at the end here, in a terrific examination of gamma-ray burst producing cosmic jets, they have discovered superluminal motion. This is when the powerful cosmic rays blast through the jet medium faster than the light does. Very different than speed through a vacuum, and this examination and science can be scaled up to the greatest quasars or down to the jets from stellar ignition. It's a torus jet feature, the torus of which is often flattened to a disk or fainter and hard to see. But this is a continuation of the high-level focus of the scientists in the field on these ultra-powerful plasma electromagnetic structures. Lots of links below the video in the box, lots of resources at suspiciousobservers.org. There's also that special video I'd love you to share from YouTube yesterday, was our second upload. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.